Welcome to the 13th part of the C++ introductory series. Today I'm going to be making a game, a simple rock, paper, scissors game. And the, all the logic and all the concepts we've been learning throughout this course, we're going to use it today. Uh, we're going to use conditionals, we're going to use uh, functions, what we've discussed previously, and we're going to use some basic analytical reasoning. Alright, so before starting out, I want to tell you what rock, paper, scissors are for those who are not aware of it. It's a rock, it's a game that is made, is a hand game, usually played between two people in which each player simultaneously forms one of three shapes with an outstretched hand. These shapes are rock, paper, and scissors. So you can see the figures of rock, paper, scissors. You have only these kind of options, a paper, a scissor, or a rock. So with all of that out of the way, let's up the ante by starting our code. I start with uh, including my necessary IO stream using namespace standard int main and the uh, container curly braces and the return zero so we need two integers because we're playing with two players one is the CPU and one is the computer I mean sorry the one is the user and the one is the CPU so basically one is gonna be the user which is us and the other will be the CPU the computer Oh, okay, so we're going to command out and we're going to prompt something like a titles thing. So rock, paper, scissors, sh shoot. Okay, so now after that, we're going to say like select one for rock. Two for paper. rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so one, two, or three. So we're gonna have given options, like if you wanna select rock, you have to select one. If you want paper, you have to select two. And if you want scissors, you have to select three. So I'm gonna give a C in, and then the user will select its value. Now we're gonna use conditionals. So basically, if user selects rock. So if user selects one, means the user selects rock. So what we're gonna prompt, prompt out, we're gonna say, you choose not shoes, choose rock. And then after that, if it doesn't, if you didn't select rock, we're gonna say else if user selects paper. So we'll say you choose paper. And the last condition is else if nothing is right then it's obviously you choose uh, scissors so basically it's saying uh, rock paper or scissors now we're gonna have the fun part now we need to decide how the computer will operate using a random function so basically we have to make the computer randomize randomly select a single rock paper scissors so basically a rock paper scissors is going to be some kind of value between one or three so i'm not going to generate a random number between one and three we have this header file called the c standard so hash include c standard c standard library and this c standard library has a lot of predefined functions we could use and one of them is the so-called random function so if i say CPU is equal to random function, so rand function. These two parentheses indicate that it's a function. Then we use this modulo operator, which is also known as the some kind of division, but it gives the answer of the remainder. So basically we want three out of three, like one, two, or three. So basically I modulo it with three. So if I modulate with three, I'm gonna have zero to two. And I know that computer is zero index. So basically it starts from zero, one, and then two. But I don't want zero because zero is not a value that I've defined. I defined from one to three. So basically I defined one, two, and three. So for that, I'm gonna have to add plus one. So if I add plus one, from it's not gonna be from zero to two, but it's gonna add one for, to both of the sides, meaning it's gonna add two plus one is equal to three. So it's gonna start three over here. And also it's gonna be over here too. So zero plus one, meaning 
one to three. So basically now we have a number that's gonna be generated from one to three. That's called the random function. So we could say if user equals to that. So the, basically the, all of this conditions what we wrote, we could just copy paste over here. So control C and just paste it right here. And now what I wanna do is that now instead of user, I could replace it. So if I do control R and then I write wherever you see user, replace it with CPU. So basically I'm changing it to CPU. So if I replace, you could see that it's and they're saying no more. So if I put my cursor right here, it's gonna detect and replace it. So that's done. And you can see that there's no more. So I say, okay, and cancel it. So I have, if CPU is equal to one, you choose rock. Else if CPU is equal to two, you choose paper. So instead of you, I want computer. So I could go again over here as control R to replace. And instead of using you, so I write you, and I wanna change it to CPU. So basically I write CPU. So replace, replace, replace. And now we're done. So basically it's saying CPU chooses rock, CPU chooses paper, and CPU chooses scissors. So that was awesome. Now we wanna tell the result. So basically it's gonna tell the number, it's gonna match it out, and it's gonna tell whether it's a tie, whether someone won, whether the CPU won, whether the user won. So if it's a match, so if I say if it's a match, what's gonna happen? If user value, is equaling to CPU value. So what we say, we say it's it's a tie. That and that's what. Okay. So I need to charge my computer, and I just plugged it in. Okay. So now after this, we need another case. Now, if it's not a tie, what's gonna happen? We're gonna use the else if condition. So basically, it's gonna test this condition first. If this condition doesn't match, it will go to the else if condition. So what is gonna be in the else if condition is if user is equal to rock, okay? So this is meaning that if user, I mean, yeah. So if user chooses rock, so what happens? Else if user chooses rock. So there's gonna be two conditions. I, it's not gonna be matched now because we have then see if CPU is equal to paper. So if if you choose rock and CPU chooses paper, you basically lose. So we say you lose because we know rock covers paper. So we could write extra text like rock covers paper, but I'm not gonna do it right now. You could do it yourself. I want you to try it yourself. I'm just gonna give you the basic logic of this program. So basically after this, is if this condition works, that's okay. But if it doesn't, we have another condition and it's called if CPU is equal to scissors, then basically you win because you chose rock over here and the CPU chose scissors and rock smashes scissors. So basically you win. And then after that, I hope you know the rules of the rock, paper, scissors game. So then after this, Basically, we're implementing the rules. So user chooses a paper. So now if paper happens. So if user chooses paper, which is two, what happens? So basically over here, I don't need to include if. I need to include else if. And the reason for this is that we already used if over here and then if this condition is false for the sup supposedly and then it's going to check this one and if this condition is false then obviously it's going to check this condition so if this is uh if this is true what's going to happen if user chooses paper obviously we're going to have if con two conditions whether the cpu will choose whether the cpu will choose rock so if you choose paper and the cpu chooses rock you win because you cover rock so all right you win and then another thing is that if cpu chooses scissors then what's going to happen and you chose paper so basically uh you lose because scissors cuts paper so you lose and i've uh, said already that you have to include the extra text like uh, explanation text if you want to make your program even better so now after this we have the last condition to test and that is else if user chooses rock 
I mean scissors. So if you uh, let me give in compound, user chooses scissors. Okay. So if user chooses scissors, we'll have if CPU is equal to rock. So if you choose, so basically you chose scissors and he and the CPU chose rock. So obviously you lost. So you lose because the rock smashes the scissors. And then if CPU equals to the last condition which is scissors I mean paper so if you chose scissors over here if CPU chooses scissors and those I mean the user chooses scissors and the CPU chooses paper so who's gonna win the scissors will win so basically the user will win so basically we say you win so we uh, uh, we saw a pattern over here. We have a you lose and then we have a you win. So we have a you win or a you lose or we have a you lose or a you win. We don't have them both two times. And now that implementation is done, we could save our code and I control S. I'll write, call this as RPS, rock, paper, scissors. Enter it, compile and run. So go to execute button, compile and run this code. And you can see we have rock, paper, scissors, shoot. So I select rock. I select one. Now it says to me, you choose rock. CPU automatically chose its scissors randomly. And I won because rock smashes scissors. Hooray, we did our first case. Now what I want to do is that I want to run this code once again. And if I run this code another time, and if I choose something else called, let's say scissors, I choose scissors, CPU chooses scissors, and now it's a tie. Whoa, it's working. So if I cho uh, do it one more time, let's see. We keep on seeing that uh, CPU is choosing scissors. And now if I do two paper, you choose paper, CPU chooses scissors, and then uh, scissors cuts paper, so I lost. Okay, now one thing you noticed that the random function is just giving one random number one time I've compiled the code and it's not changing it any other time. You can see every kind of compilation I'm doing, I'm seeing that random number is being generated as three, which is scissors. And I wanted to change it randomly every time I compile the code. So for that case, I have to include one piece of code in the beginning of this program. And that's called static random time. And, and then we have to write and null. So basically this code does is that every time I execute the program, the CPU will generate a random number differently every single time. So every time, random number every single time. So now, observe the compilation, compile and run. Now you can see that there's something called a time that is not defined. Okay, so for this statement we need another header file and that header file is called c time so hash include c time and basically this header file is used in so many games out there you played so many games and you know that the cpu changes its values over and over and when we include this header file you're gonna see that we're not gonna have any more error and now we have error free before we've seen beforehand without the c time random function we saw that the, uh, the CPU was keep on generating scissors as a random number. But now if I have rock, uh, CPU chose scissors and I won. Okay, I smashed the scissors. But now if I try one more time again, let's see what's going to happen this time. If I chose paper, it chose scissors again and I lost. Okay, so one more time I wanted to execute. I want to check if it's going to change up now. And now it finally changed. You chose rock, CPU chooses scissors, and what happens? I lost because paper covers rock. Congratulations everyone, you've made your first C++ game, and I hope you love this program. See you in the next video, peace out.